Uh, hello students, um, I am doing the second part of the metabolic uh, alkalos um, set of second part of the ABG presentation and we are starting from metabolic alkalosis. Uh, metabolic alkalosis is the most common uh, acid base imbalance. It accounts for 50% of all acid base disturbances and when bicarbonate builds up in the blood alkalosis occurs. So whenever there is too much of bicarbonate in the blood alkalosis occurs and the pH will go up. So that means the alkaline state is happening that's why the pH is going up. A deficit of acid in the body will cause alkalosis. Um, if you talk about numbers then metabolic alkalosis is an acid base imbalance where the pH is greater than 7.45 and the bicarbonate level is greater than 26. Um, there is an excess of base in the body and there is a loss of acid. So and as we know the lungs are not causing this problem. It is a metabolic problem and not a respiratory one. Uh, metabolic problem has to do something with kidneys and which involves bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. Here uh, because it is a metabolic imbalance happening uh, the lungs will compensate and the lungs will compensate by retaining carbon dioxide by means of hypoventilation and uh, what is hypoventilation? It's uh, breathing at an abnormally slow rate so when you ask somebody to breathe in at a very slow rate this will result in in an increased amount of carbon dioxide in the blood the two most common causes of metabolic alkalosis are loss of stomach acid and diuretics so, so the two most common causes of metabolic alkalosis are loss of stomach acid and diuretics so Let's go to the next slide. Uh, we'll be talking about the metabolic alkalosis causes. And uh, some of the causes are baking soda, low potassium, activation of RAS system, renin and system, uh, licorice, and dialysis. Now, baking soda, many people take baking soda as a home remedy for GI, upset. You know they are having bad stomach and they take home baking soda and the home remedy for this GI upset is very alkaline so then the metabolic alkalosis state happens hypokalemia when the uh, when there is a low potassium in body it causes the hydrogen ions to move into the cell and it forces the potassium ions from the cell to move into the bloodstream and this increases the serum potassium and this is a normal compensatory mechanism to correct the low potassium in body and this causes a decrease in this also causes a decrease in available um, hydrogen needed to make hydrochloric acid and uh, so when there is a decrease in hydrochloric acid uh, you know due to lack of this decrease of acid the body the the body will become more alkalotic so less acid and less acid will be there and more base will be there so that's how due to low potassium uh, more alkaline state happens in body now when there is activation of renin angiotensin system uh, this uh, due to this the hydrogen ions will be secreted into the nephron of kidneys and they add bicarbonate to the vascular space, to the blood space, making the blood alkaline. So when there is activation of renin angiotensin system, hydrogen ions, they get secreted into the nephrons of kidneys and which adds uh, bicarbonate to the vascular space by just by the process of hydrogen ions being secreted into the nephron. It will further lead to the addition of bicarbonate to the blood space and that's why the blood will start becoming alkaline. Uh, licorice, um, licorice is said to be 50 times more sweeter than sugar and it is used to flavor chewing tobaccos and cigars. 
although rare it uh, this licorice is not that common it can cause low potassium and if there is low potassium and how alkalosis happens I just explained so um, and dialysis now sometimes when there is an end-stage renal disease and uh, patient is on dialysis then this the, the solution is called dialysylate so this solution which is dialysylate can have high bicarbonate level and high bicarbonate level might be used to correct the patient's uh, metabolic acidosis problem in end-stage renal disease and sometimes this dialysis can increase the base level in the blood and the patient can become metabolic uh, uh, patient can have a metabolic alkalotic stage let's go to the next slide okay vomiting bulimia ng tube suctioning these are the most uh, one of the most common causes of metabolic alkalosis because what all these do is that they remove stomach acid from body leaving the body alkaline um, excess of antacid injunction when you when you take so much of antacid it increases the the blood uh, serum alkaline levels and the kidneys may not be able to get rid of these excess of alkaline levels so this excess of uh, uh, base in body now blood transfusions now blood when there is a blood transfusions then to there is a preservative in blood which is known as citrate and this preservative is when the in when uh, in the process of blood transfusion this preservative citrate is converted to bicarbonate and when blood is in, administered the client is getting bicarbonate too so in blood transfusions it's because in the process there is a there is a preservative called citrate in blood which has a lot of you know uh, the citrate will make patient get a lot of bicarbonate and that's why the patient is becoming more alkaloidic uh, sodium bicarb uh, sometimes there is some cold blue situation and the doctor wants that IV administration of sodium bicarb need be given to the patient and at that time if it goes little higher or it's not monitored then that can also leave the patient little alkaline uh, thiazide and the other loop diuretics uh, what they do in body is that they lead to loss of chlorine and when there is loss of chlorine the manufacturing of hydrochloric acid in body uh, which we do need to keep the to keep the bad body in uh, blood gas uh, balance uh, this decreases so law due to this thiazide and diuretics loop, di loop diuretics there's a loss of chlorine which impedes manufacturing of hydrochloric acid making the body alkaline <clears throat> when there is less chlorine more bicarbonate resor reabsorption by the body will happen and this will increase alkaline level in the body Let's go to the next slide, which is about sign and symptoms. Um, <clears throat> signs of hypokalemia can come under arrhythmia. So you can see flat T waves on the telemonitor. Um, hypoventilation um, is happening because um, body is trying to retain the carbon dioxide to correct the alkaline problem having happening in the body uh, the receptors in medulla of brain they are depressed due to a lot of bicarbonate um, hypocalcemia uh, is one of the signs and symptoms and alkalosis causes the calcium to bind with the albumin in body and making the calcium inactive and therefore you see signs of hypocalcemia which is like tetany tingling in fingers and toes um, hepatic encephalopathy um, hepatic encephalopathy is a uh, you might you might learn about this uh, a lot in your in your second med search course 
it is just a, a decrease or decline in your brain function and it is due to the maybe kidney or liver not working because kidney or liver when they're not working they are not able to remove the toxins from the blood and this can lead to build up of toxins in the bloodstream and which can also lead to brain damage and one of the toxins which is really increases is ammonia so when there is hepatic encephalopathy ammonia production body will increase and the ammonia is a kind of a waste product in the body and it is usually excreted through urine but when it is being accumulated in the body and it's not getting out it can have very like kind of a poisonous effect on the body and body can and if not treated on time this can also lead to uh, you know permanent damage to the body uh, some general signs of this uh, you know build up of ammonia in the body will be like uh, usually neuro you know confusion uh, fatigue uh, some other signs can be you know nausea without vomiting or with vomiting or maybe a pain in the back or abdomen so that's how hepatic encephalopathy is one of the signs and symptoms of metabolic alkalosis and this will lead to more buildup of ammonia in body and the brain doesn't like this and it can affect permanently it can do permanently damage to the body what you can do to help the patient with metabolic alkalosis you keep first of all we want to know why it's happening so we will find the cause so whatever causes we discussed in last two slides if they are there we want to correct that and we will correct if any arrhythmias like you know due to the potassium low potassium any happening we will correct that we will assess for low blood pressure we will stop patients bicarbonate intake we will monitor respiration loc uh, we can give uh, if there is um, uh, if there are severe cases in which the body is uh, going uh, to correct the problem in severe cases where the body is going too acidic because there was some uh, treatment given then we can also give ammonium chloride IV in severe cases to reduce the acidity. We can give diamox to increase excretion of bicarbonate through the kidneys because there's a lot of base. So let's go to the next slide. Um, usually there um, you should be getting two classes for this ABG itself because ABG interpretation is a skill which is learned by nurses in ICU uh, in, in through practice. So you learn so many things on floors in nursing school, but actual um, hard, you know, actual uh, learning it happens through practice on the floor when you do it so much. Um, now, in fact, sometimes they have. ABG interpretation classes going on for two days in the hospitals, you know, just as a as a promoting learning of nurses. Uh, so and sometimes there are tests which nurses have to take for ABG itself uh, as one of the competency course for practicing in ICU. So at this level, I mean, uh, based on pH, uh, carbon dioxide bicarbonate oxygen all that the patient can show signs of you know the imbalances which we discussed discussed respiratory acidosis respiratory alkalosis metabolic acidosis metabolic alkalosis patient can have this in an acute stage in you know like a fully compensated stage or partially compensated state now what does it mean it means that you know when a, in an imbalance is happening how kidneys and lungs are compensating at that time and this will show in some numbers too I don't want you to go deep in that I just want you to uh, understand looking at the numbers understand and referring to this blue table understand whether the body is going through acidosis or alkalosis is the body turning in as in is the body has more acid in it or more alkaline state in it and second I want to know 
whether it is metabolic condition or respiratory condition so is the lungs are are the lungs sick or the kidney sick and then if you know this much for your um, finals I'll be happy because uh, um, beyond that I don't want you to test you on the fully compensated or partially compensated so if you get a question exam it will be somewhere around the examples I'm giving you here so here it says which lab values indicate metabolic acidosis so I will look at all four problems and all four options and I would want to go to each of them and I would want to first look at just the pH and I'm going to look at the pH and I see that the pH is 7.40 in first problem so we have to look at acidosis because it's telling you which one of this is metabolic acidosis so acidosis the pH numbers should be going down so we can easily even before looking even um, you know, we don't even want to look at carbon dioxide and bicarbonate in the first questions because the the pH is uh, is almost normal. There is nothing wrong happening there. So let's go to the second option. The second option, the pH is 7.33. So now here it is out of normal range it's going down so it does satisfy our condition of acidosis uh, let's look at the ph in number three and ph in number four also so ph in number three is also low which is 7.28 and ph in num in four number four is 7.46 so we know that we can easily take out um number one and number four because we want a pH which is low in value which is uh, the normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45 we want something which is lower than 7.35 which is the lowest range of the pH so here we will look at number two and number three now when we have decided it's either of now it's either of uh, Two, two, number two and number three, either second one is right or third one is right. So let's now look at second one and we see that the carbon dioxide is 30. And what is the normal carbon dioxide? The normal carbon dioxide is from 35 to 45. So we know that carbon dioxide here is low. Then we look at bicarbonate, which is HCO3 and it's 18 what is the normal range for hco3 the normal range for hco3 is 22 to 26 so hco3 is low too so now we know that ph is low carbon dioxide is low bicarbonate is low and is the same thing happening in number three also so ph is low carbon dioxide is high and bicarbonate is uh, almost normal. There's nothing happening with bicarbonate in number three. It's almost normal. So in number three option, the pH is low, carbon dioxide is high, and bicarbonate is normal. But according to metabolic acidosis table, which is right underneath it, the pH should be low when pH is low bicarbonate is low and carbon dioxide is low then a metabolic acidosis state is happening so looking at that table number two is uh, is the right answer so this is how we you do the AG interpretation so because if you look at number one actually it's the normal values there's nothing wrong happening there uh, answer three is actually uh, respiratory acidosis um, happening and answer four is actually going towards the alkaline alkalosis to do high pH, pH level so this is how you look at the options and you interpret first the, whether the condition is acidotic or alkali alkaline and then you go and look at the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate and where the where the trend is going towards high side or low side so you need to know the normal range for ph bicarbonate 
and cover that side. Let's go to the next slide. Here, uh, pH is 7.28, which so low carbon dioxide is 50 and bar carbonate is high. So according to all this, if you look at the table, it's respiratory acidosis uh, condition because the pH, according to respiratory acidosis, pH should be low, um, carbon dioxide should be high, and uh, uh, bicarbonate should be high too. So this satisfies our condition of respiratory acidosis, the numbers, so this, the third one is the answer. Let's go to the next slide. A client's ABG results are so many, so you tell me the nurse should assess for us. So this is what they have done is, and actually this is one of the uh, styles of endless questions so in the here um, they are not telling you that these ABGs numbers that pH and carbon dioxide and bicarbonate these are numbers consistent with metabolic alkalosis they are not telling you that but what they are doing is they are giving you sign and symptoms of metabolic alkalosis and here it is number three which is numbness and tingling of the extremities so uh, these ABG's numbers are consistent with metabolic alkalosis. Numbness and tinglings are associated, associated with metabolic alkalosis due to hypocalcemia. So th that's why this is one of the questions which you kind of questions which you might also get. So you have the ABG numbers. You have to know on your own based on the ABG numbers what kind of imbalance is happening and then you should know the signs and symptoms and these are the most common kind of questions they usually ask okay let's go to the next slide and then that's just our last slide um, here the arterial blood class is 7.58 carbon dioxide 21 bicarbonate 19 so this is condition is happening is where the pH is um, high so pH is high means it is alkaline and then we see the carbon dioxide is low and bicarbonate is also low so if pH is high and carbon dioxide and bicarbonate both are low according to this table then the condition happening is respiratory alkalosis um, this is a new concept but I did start you all on this and um, there is also another small video attached to this to get more overview of pH in body uh, which I said during the my presentation that if you go to my YouTube account it is there and you can just get a small idea of you know how to start learning about the ABGs but this presentation is what is, the, is what I want you to know for your finals and if you have any questions then you can come and see me in my office hours on Monday as well as my office hours on uh, Thursday okay and I think I'm thinking of coming to office hours a little earlier on Monday and Thursdays okay so I so this brings us to the end of our ABG presentation, okay?